Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Cook Along. Uh, hope you've got your Youth Chef box all delivered to you now. Make sure you unpack it, check all the ingredients are there. They're all numbered, so match them together. Really, really simple. We're about to get cooking now, going through the 10 dishes. Remember, if you want to order for next weekend's menu, last order's Sunday night. And as well, we've got all the extras now. So we've got tarts and tan of apple that you can order on a weekly basis. We've got the Sunday roast, which at the moment is a roast salad of lamb. Cuttlefish crackers, cheese gougers, so much going on. So check out the website. You won't be disappointed with all of the different options that are on there now. Yubi Chef is well and truly on the up. So let's get cooking. Let's get cooking first of our weekly bake course. So unwrap your bread. So in here you've got your sourdough. Look at that, lovely sourdough. This is sun-dried tomato and Kalamata black olives in there. Lovely little shine to that sourdough. That's going to go in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. So let's get that in. There we go. And then, just look in there, you see? The little basil butter that we sent you with. So all you need to do on here, keep it in the fridge till the last second, take it out of the tub, carefully take off the little paper, and all I'm gonna do is get a little bit of molten salt. We don't put it on before because it will start to denature the butter, so that's hence why it's going on now. Get your little fish slice in there, onto the board, there we go. And there you've got your butter all ready to go. This is gonna to start to soften up now. This is aerated, so it's beautiful and light, all ready to spread on that crispy sourdough when it comes out. So back in about 10 minutes, and we'll finish off our sourdough. So let's get our sourdough out. There it comes, it's been here about 10, 12 minutes now. If you prefer, let it cool down for a little bit, just so that you don't burn your hands when you slice it. Take a serrated knife. And then be careful when you slice it, of course, it's straight. The best way is to put your hand just on top and then just through. Through like that. Put a little cloth on the top if you need. I prefer nice little slices so you can really get that full texture of the sourdough. So, let's just fan that out a bit. You can see, look at, look at that. See all those lovely olives? Calamari olives going through it. So let's fan that out. Tap it off slightly onto our board. And there we go, you've got stunning sourdough. Those tomatoes going through, those calamari olives, and that lovely basil butter to spread on the top. First start of you on the Yubi Chef menu this week, we've got a capaccio of yellowfin tuna. So you see the tuna just there? Look at that beautiful colour in there, lovely. First of all, we're going to get the sashimi on croute in the oven. So we take all of the trim just from the side of the actual sashimi loin, um, and then this is mixed into a paste with some soy, ginger in there, and then coated in sesame seeds, black and white sesame seeds, and it's all on our own sourdough. So four to five minutes in the oven. Let's get that in. And then I've got my, I've got a nice little rectangle plate here, but I've chosen to plate it up on. You can use a board whichever you prefer. Take some of your dressing. This is a little soy and bonito dressing. So bonito is just like dried tuna flakes. I'm just gonna get a good bit of that dressing. Work that into your radishes, like so. Make sure they're all nicely coated. Just leave them to sit for one second. Then what I'm gonna do is, I've got a little salad here of muli. So this is little white radish, which I've just dressed in our sesame mayonnaise. And I'm gonna just spoon it out onto my plate and I want to try to put it on there the same shape or the same length sorry as the tuna carpaccio because this is gonna the tuna is gonna sit on top of this so put your and what you can do just to measure it see I've got my tuna there put my plate and I can see that's gonna be lovely all sit on the top so just spread out that little, this is a mayonnaise based muli. Spread that out, lovely, like that. And then what we're gonna do, tuna, this is the top of the tuna. So we're gonna just turn it over, take off the top, and then all I'm going to do is, just like that, invert it onto the top. Nice and quick, gently peel off the paper, and then a little tidy up if you need to. Just with those little bits of herbs. I just want them to look really bang on, so I'm just gonna scrape that 
back from the edge of the tuna, like so. Okay, then what we do, a little bit more dressing. So give it a good stir each time. Look at that. Just on top of the tuna, this is just to dress it. Now the soy in here, of course, has that little salty kick. But I want to add a tiny a bit more salt, so tiniest bit of flakes on the top like that. And remember, this is just before you serve it as well, so, so it doesn't dissolve. Pull that over slightly to allow for my little sashimi to sit on there. And then all we're going to do is just put some lovely little slices of radish. Most important thing here is don't cover up all of that tuna, but just kind of get some nice pieces in there, like so. See, I'm just playing with those colours a little bit. Nice little, another little pink one in there. And there we go. All happy with that. Finally, a little bit more dressing. So it's looking fresh as a daisy. Then let's get our sashimi. Now that comes, that will all be nice and crisp. Then all you need to do is just put your sashimi just alongside like that and you're ready to go. Look at that. Lovely, simple, gorgeous, fresh tuna. Amazing colour from a sashimi grade tuna. Hope you enjoyed the first starter. Up next we've got a pork belly cassoulet. So here, pork belly which we brined and then we've slow cooked it with this lovely cassoulet, pork mince in there, white beans, thyme, garlic, um, lovely bit of mustard in there. We've got sauce crevice that we're serving it with, a little crispy uh, chia batter. It's just gonna go in the oven for uh, two to three minutes, basically just until they're just golden. Uh, and then I've got a little garnish, soft herbs, caper berries in there, capers, and a um, touch of pickle shallots. Take some rapeseed oil, dress that up nicely. Also, dress your pork belly cassoulet, and just with the back of a spoon, rub that in. It's gonna give it a lovely shine. And then take a little bit of molten salt on the top, a touch in your salad. Give that a little mix. So you want all that mixed together. This is like your, your little chutney pickles on the side. So really great combination of all the flavors here. Let's take our pork belly cassoulet, plate that like so. Then we're gonna get a nice little pile of that little salad. See how we split the caper berries in half You've got those crispy capers going through it. So, lovely little salad, all wet. Let's tidy that down. Right, sauce crevice. This is a mayonnaise with some chopped hard boiled egg going through it. Again, capers, parsley, touch of lemon. Just time to grab our croutons out. There we go, so don't take long in there at all. Just before I put them on, I'm gonna drizzle them as well. A touch of rapeseed. Let's just put those together. Mind out, they're quite hot. I'm just gonna use a spatula. Like so. And then just on the side. There you go. Lovely classic, or we'll take on a classic, pork belly cassoulet, uh, like a terrine. Um, a little herb salad, sauce crebiche. Crispy cheer batter. Hope you enjoy it. A vegetarian starts with you before we move on to our main courses now. So I've got a chilled pea soup uh, with summer truffle. Then we've got summer truffle mascarpone just here. Little lovely little gougeres of those, baby gougeres filled with truffle bechamel. And we've got a salad of peas and pea shoots with a touch of lemon. So first thing, get your gougeres in the oven. They'll take about between two to four minutes, but just until the bechamel is hot in the centre. So let's get them in. In there you go. And then I've got my bowl here. That's just been in the freezer. The fridge freezer is absolutely fine. Take your lemon, 
and squeeze that just over your peas and pea shoots. So get a really good bit of lemon in there. Nice bit of rapeseed oil, that will dress them up lovely. And a bit of seasoning. So, take a spoon, give that a good stir. And what it will do, the lemon will start to work on those pea shoots and on the peas, just softening them down slightly. That's all you want to do. So, they're all dressed. Then we've got our chilled bowl. Get your lovely chilled pea soup, pour that in. It's a little bit thicker, quite like it that way. If you, if you want it a bit thinner, of course, you just thin it, thin it down a touch. Then get your peas and pea shoots. Going to put a little spoon of those, some of those pea shoots, just in the centre, like so. A few more peas. Now just pop the colour. So that's all lovely. Then what we'll do? We've got a pan of hot water here. Get your mascarpone. Dip the spoon. Make sure it's nice and hot. And then into your pan like so you see I'm just curling that around put it back in if you need one more little dip tap it off well you see like that it just curls around nicely wipe the bottom of the spoon off and then it will just drop just like that into your veluto quick clean down a tiny bit of rapeseed I'm just gonna put look at those little droplets don't have to do this but I just love that little colour and that nuttiness of that rapeseed all on the top, making it look beautiful and summery. Little wipe off, let's grab our gougers out. And this is important now, go straight to the table because you still want them of course warm. Let's just sit them, just like little jewels. And there we go, straight to the table, what a beautiful summery starter. I've uh, got a fillet of sea bass now for you. I haven't done sea bass for quite a time, but this week we could get some really stonking sea bass, lovely thick fillet in there. So what we've done, we've already coloured off the fillet for you. This is going to go into the oven together with these lovely new potatoes and baby artichokes. About 10 to 12 minutes you're looking at, just until you don't want the fish overcooked, of course. You just want your potatoes warm through and the artichokes as well as the fish. So let's get that into the oven now. There we go. Get that all cooking, and that just leaves me telling you the garnishes. Lovely little sauce vierge here with some dried tomatoes, flowers, little nasturtium leaves in there. I'm going to dress that just as we come to serve it with a tomato water dressing. This is tomato juice from hung up tomatoes from a muslin cloth, rapes it all, and shallots. And I've got a nice little chai creme fresh that we're just going to spoon onto that sea bass as we serve it. Back in about 10 minutes to put our sea bass together. So let's get our sea bass out here. That's our sea bass, potatoes and artichoke on the way out. Nice cloth because they're nice and hot. There we go. Lovely piece of sea bass. That skin is just crisping up on there. Then let's get our serving plate. And away we go. First things first, a little bit of Vierge dressing. Give it a good stir. And then let's just dress up our tomatoes tiny bit of seasoning just on there as well like so and let's start to build so potatoes I'm just going to put a nice little area of them and the artichokes in, on which to put my sea bass like so and then I'm going to have a few going around the outside of the dish as well so it's lovely little baby globe artichokes on there like so then let's get our sea bass fillet. Set that on the top. And then let's get our viage. So, tomatoes. I like tomatoes, just nicely dried out in the oven slightly just to intensify that flavour. There we go. all around make it look really colourful play of course with those 
with all the colours in there. Get those nasturtium leaves just balanced off. There we go, so almost almost ready. Just making sure I've got those colours all visible. And then let's get some more of that dressing. Like so, just to finish off, as you can see, this is a seriously light dish. I'm going back for even a bit more dressing. Plenty of that around. A little clean up. And then let's get a spoon, dip in a bit of hot water. And get your little chives creme fresh and just sit that on the top and let that melt all the way down. I'm sure you'd agree it has a beautiful steak of sea bass tomatoes. My meat main course this week is a little comfy shoulder of lamb. So in here, um, first of all we've coloured the lamb off, we've braised it, cooked it very long and slow and then we've rolled it and we put it in there with a really really tasty lamb and red wine sauce. So that's all in there, together with your braised carrot, into a pan of water, so just put that in there, it's just scalding water, you can put a lid on it if you prefer, but that's going to stay quite happy there, about 12 to 14 minutes, just to heat that lamb up, it's all cooked, just so it's all ready to come out. When, it, when we come back, garnishes, I've got little pickled carrots, so I've got some pickled carrots here, which are the um, yellow and the purple carrots as well, uh, most important of them, just drain them off, uh, we've sent you separately so they stay in those nice, uh, nice separate colours. And then we've got a vichy carrot puree and we've got a nice little coriander pesto as well. So when we come back I'll show you putting this together for a very, very tasty lamb shoulder dish. So, just about ready to plate my lamb up now. Let's get that carrot, just cut that bag open. And then that's your braised carrot in there, we've just hollowed it out slightly as well. That's all ready for our carrot puree to go in which is just here. So you see how that carrot puree is lovely and smooth. That's all ready. And then just look at what I'm doing with my lamb. You can see it there, I've taken it out of the bag, put it into a pan, I'm just bringing it back up to the simmer. Get a spoon, and just baste that sauce. So you see how I've just get the sauce, baste it on the top, look at that, lovely and rich. And as that reduces down, it's just gonna glaze that lamb up lovely. So, right back with that. Let's get our plate. Let's get our carrot puree. And then with this, drain out a little bit of that oil. Just want you to put just a touch of carrot puree in top of your carrot, just where we've made that little incision for you, like so. Then let's get that onto our plate. Let's grab our lamb. You can see now, lovely and lovely and glazed. Spoon that sauce all the way over. Be quite careful with the lamb as well because of course it's uber soft where it's been braised. Look at that, lovely. Let's just lift that out. Just gonna keep my sauce in my pan just to finish. And meanwhile, let's get some of our pickled carrots. So let's just top that braised carrot, some of those nice pieces. This has got that lovely pickle kind of sort of zing to it, so that's gonna cut through rich puree, all that braised, super tasty lamb. So, a few more on there. Spend a bit of time, make sure they're all looking lovely. One more I'd like on the end. Lovely, beautiful. Then let's get a little bit of our pesto. So this is a coriander pesto. I'm just gonna take some nice little pieces just on the top. Like so. One last bit. A little bit more carrot puree. Just at the back. And then finally, let's finish off with that lamb sauce. So, a bit on the top. That makes sure it's lovely and glazed. And then, there we go, look at that. And there you have it.
lovely shoulder of lamb with that fishy carrot puree, pickled carrots, and that coriander pesto to finish. I'm going to show you how to do the tart fine of tomatoes now. So this is local Isle of Wight tomatoes. Then we've got a little puff pastry bakes. We've got a nice cheesy polenta that's on there. So that's going to go in the oven for about 15 minutes just until that cheese is melted and of course all the polenta and pastry is nice and hot. So let's get that going in there. And then my garnishes, uh, I've got this little tomato fondue, so a nice thick reduced tomato fondue. That's just going to go on the stove, just close to when the tomato fondue, the uh, tart's going to come out, warm that back up. And then you've got your little uh, piping bags here, biodeg uh, biodegradable piping bags of course, they're compostable. This has got green barn goat's cheese in there, so whipped up green barn goat's cheese, a touch of whey. That's just going to get the top cut off the piping bag and then we're going to pipe that on top of the tart. And then here we've got this lovely rocket and lemon salsa, so that's in there again, cut the top off. And when our tart comes out, I'll show you how to build this all together. So, out comes my tart tomatoes, lovely and glazed. Look at that, beautiful. Get your plate all heated up and then my fondue, as I said, I've just warmed that up. So, if it's a bit too thick. Add a tiny bit of water to it, but you want it nice consistency. There you go. This is a few spoonfuls of this in the centre of your plate. And this is just going to blend with that pastry on the bottom of the tart. Absolutely lovely. So you'll have crisp pastry, this rich tomato fondue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of sauce. You won't see that as the tart goes on. And just before I put the tart on the plate, let's lift it off. Be careful of that really hot tray. Let's move that out of the way. A little bit of an adjust of the uh, tomatoes if you need to, just where they might have moved slightly, but just rearrange them, make them all look beautiful. There we go. And then goat's cheese. This is Green Barn goat's cheese. I'm just going to pipe some lovely little piles of that. Not too much, just a little bit. There we go. And then just leaves our little salsa. So this is our rocket and lemon salsa. And again, I'm just gonna kind of pipe it in different spots to the goat's cheese. So you've got a lovely, all those colored colors popping, the red, the white goat's cheese, that green. Look at that, and you see it, all of a sudden it really, really comes to life. There we go. Tiny bit of salt, just a tiny bit. Those tomatoes are super sweet. Let's get ready to plate it. On we go. And look at that. So simple, so tasty. Let's get to the table. Let's dive into this tomato tart. Up next, we've got a lovely little sable biscuit with a natural yogurt mousse just on the top. So really, really fine sable. Have that on your tray, then get your mousse straight out of the fridge, so obviously it will soften up quite quickly. Get that just onto your biscuit. Look at how delicate that is, absolutely beautiful. Let's get rid of the paper. So you can leave that just there. Then what you want to do, take your red fruits. I'm just gonna kind of cut a few of them down to quarters, some halves. Raspberries I'm gonna leave whole. Then get your lovely little jus de fraise. So this is a juice of strawberries, touch of icing sugar in there. Basically cook it very, very uh, slowly over a pan simmering water. And then we hang it up in a muslin cloth and you get this amazing little juice come out of the bottom. So you've got that juice in there, touch of saturns in there. And then we've got lovely little cubes of saturns jelly on the top. So what we'll do, just dress that over nicely. Take your sable biscuit onto your plate and then we'll start to build it. So drain them off slightly as you go and then you just want to place them on nice and carefully. Again, play a little bit with, uh, with how it looks as you go around and you can get obviously lots of fruits on there but you want them of course to stay on. So. Plenty more raspberries to go. Keep building it up. And that stock of that uh, 
So turns and strawberries, of course, makes them all lovely and shiny. So you see, I'm being very, very delicate as we plate them. Have a little strawberry, I think we're all good. Then just empty your little cubes of Saturn's jelly, that lovely dessert wine. And then I'm just gonna just let them sit in place just on the top, like so. They're almost little, little jewels on the top of your mousse. Try and sort of place them where they'll, where they'll stay locked in, because obviously a little bit slippery. So I'm gonna get as many as I can on that, beautiful. And then finish off, sharp knife, nice and dry. Put your mint leaves together. And just chop through the mint. Nice little rock in motion. And then the tiniest bit of mint. Just for that fresh kick on the top as well. And strawberries, mint. So it turns, it's all going lovely together. And that is it. That's my summary dish of sable of biscuit on the bottom, natural yogurt mousse, lovely acidity, red fruits, so it turns jelly. So this dessert for you is a pressing and nectarine set in a lovely lemon verbena syrup. So I think it's the first dessert we've ever done with nectarine, so yeah, we go first. Just taking my Aero out of the freezer. This is white chocolate Aero, dusted in lemon verbena. Really, really nice. So, let's get plating. All we need to do, take your pressing. This has just been out, just coming up to room temperature. Be careful with it, uh, of course, because it will be very, very delicate. You see, I'm just gonna ease that clean film up there. And then let's just put that slightly off center on our plate. Pull the clean film up around it. Look at that, all those layers of nectarine, just lightly set. What we're gonna do next, take our lemon verbena mousse, I've just cut the end off my piping bag, and I'm gonna pipe a nice little, all in one place, nice little pile of fat lemon verbena mousse. Then, some raspberries. Beautiful, fat, chunky raspberries, look at them, lovely. We'll get all those on the plate, like so. And all that's left, your verbena, make sure it stays in the freezer till last second. Then you get that lovely little crunch from the white chocolate. Balance it, good bit on there. And I am very, very happy with that. So, that is pressing the nectarines, fresh raspberries, verbena mousse, white chocolate arrow. Hope you enjoy it. Final course on this week's Tuber Chef menu, our cheese course. This week it's a blue cheese quiche, so a fabulous Isle of Wight blue cheese, uh, lovely little uh, short crust pastry base. This is gonna go in the oven about six, seven minutes, just until it warms up. You can have it cold if you prefer, but I like it where this cheese is gonna melt, it's gonna glaze over the top. So let's get that in the oven, six to eight minutes, and that goes. Garnishes when we come back, little salad of watercress, fresh figs, Pickle walnut dressing, I'm gonna take some of my dressing, dress it over the salad, mix it up well, a little bit of seasoning, we'll be all ready to go. So, here we go, blue cheese quiche. Oh, look at that. That lovely Isle of Wight blue cheese, that rind where it's melted over the top, it smells absolutely divine. So, not much to do with this really, it all speaks for itself. Let's get a little bit of that pickle walnut dressing, dress it over our watercress, lovely and peppery, and those sweet figs, little mix. I'm not gonna go with any extra salt in there because of course that blue cheese has that little salty kick on there which I'm more than happy with. So, let's get our quiche. Lift it off first of all onto your board, of course because it can be a touch messy where you've got that molten cheese on the top. So, let's just get that onto our plate. Quick clean up of my board. And then all I'm gonna do, nice little pile of watercress. Try and keep those leaves as kind of at least scrunched up as possible. 
and then we'll get some of our figs going through there. Some on the top. Figs, blue cheese, it's like that match made in heaven, isn't it? There we go, a few more figs. You've got some nice pieces of a pickle walnut in there, so fish those out and don't make sure they don't stay in the bowl. So here we go, a few pieces of pickle walnut just on the top. Back for some dressing, give it a stir. There we go. Lovely. Cheese course, last dish on Newbie Chef menu this week. Really looking forward to this one. Blue cheese quiche, figs and watercress. I hope you've enjoyed this week's uh, Yubi Chef menu. As always, feedback is so key to us, so if you've had the menus, if you want to tell us about your experience, how you found it, please let us know. If you haven't had the boxes yet, there's so much happening. We've got lots of new dishes on the website, and it's a great way to impress your friends, your loved one, etc. It's really, really great fun. So check out the website, last orders this Sunday. I hope you enjoyed this week's menu.